Hey fellow gliders, welcome back. Today we're taking a look at Glide's newest feature, API integration. This is huge, we've been waiting for this for quite a while now. API stands for Application Programming Interface. That all sounds very technical, but in layman's terms, it just means the data from one app talking to a different app. Think of it like this. We have two different applications, let's say Twitter and Glide, right? And each of them live in their own houses in the same neighborhood. Now, there's no way for the people in one house to get into the other house unless there are doors and sidewalks, right? So when an application decides they want to open up their API, that basically means they're building a door to their house and putting a sidewalk out in front so that any other resident in the neighborhood can follow the path to the house and knock on the door to get inside, or if they have the keys, directly access the house inside. So what we're gonna do is find a way to have some application talk back to our Glide app using Glide's API. Now this was all possible before using Google Sheets. So as long as you had a Google Sheet tied to your Glide app, you could have that third-party tool talk to the Google Sheet, and then the Google Sheet would then update your Glide app. The problem with that, even though it works, is that it was very time consuming because it would take you know five, 10 seconds for the data to hit the Google Sheet and then anywhere from 10 seconds all the way up to maybe even 10 minutes before the data would appear in Glide and then thus show to the user. So it could be anywhere from a 30 second to five, 10 minute turnaround time, which isn't the best user experience. So with Glide's API, we cut that down exponentially. Using Glide's API, you can take it down to anywhere between three to six seconds for the user to finally see that information happen on their side in the app. Now, the possibilities here are endless. There are thousands upon thousands of use cases here. Um, imagine you take an application like Gmail, where every time I create a new email message, a new row appears in my Glide app, so I can see it in whatever context my Glide app is presenting. Then from there, let's say I modify the label of that Gmail message, and then it could thus update my row in Glide. Or if I delete the email message, it deletes that row in Glide. So again, lots of use cases here. So in this video, what I'm planning on doing is using Calendly and have that talk to Glide. So Calendly is a booking software, so anytime someone books a new time with me, it's going to add a new row to my Glide app where then I can thus manage it in my Glide app, let's say. Um, and if I decide to cancel the event, I can have that row in my Glide app either modified or deleted. We'll take a look at both of those. So to get started here, I'm going to use Integromat. You have to use some sort of tool to um, build out that API call back to Glide. Uh, you can sit down and code it, surely, if you're a coder. I am a no coder, so I am not going to sit down and code that integration. Uh, so you have a couple of choices. The two most popular choices are Integromat or Zapier. Uh, my friend Darren Alderman, who has his own YouTube channel with Glide, is doing a similar video on this, but he's doing the Zapier route. So I'll link his video in the description below in case you are a Zapier user. I like to use Integromat. It's more visual. It's actually less expensive than Zapier, and it comes with free collaboration tools um, on any of their paid plans, which is fantastic. So here in Integromat, I've already created a new scenario, and you see here I'm watching new events from Calendly, and then I'm getting the uh, the details from this Calendly here. Uh, but again, pick your app. You know, if you want to do choose Twitter or Instagram or Facebook or whatever whatever app you want to start with as your trigger, you place here in Integromat, and then the way you talk back to Glide using Integromat is an HTTP module. I believe in Zapier, it's a webhook module, um, but don't quote me on that. All right, so I'm gonna add an HTTP module, and that basically means do something on the internet, and the thing I want to do is make a request. So I'll select make a request here and just connect it to my Calendly, and if we dive into this HTTP request, you see it's looking for a URL, a method, some headers, and a body type, and then we need to find some way to uh, grab the parameters from this watch events and throw it back into Glide. So what do we put in here? We don't have to memorize it. Glide gives us all the information we need. All we need to know is how to copy and paste. So I'm gonna come back to my app here and we see I'm gonna select one of these tables, this bookings table, which I've already kind of fleshed out with columns here. And if you have a pro app, or an enterprise level app, you have access to Glide's API. So if you're on a basic or free plan, you're gonna to have to upgrade if you want Glide's API. All right, so from here, again, I select the table, I right click on the table, and now you see I have this new option called Show API Usage. Clicking on Show API Usage, you see there's three different commands for a pro level app that I have access to. I can add a new row, set 
columns, which is basically edit a value in a row, or delete the row altogether. And you see, it gives me all the code that I need here. I don't need to know what the code does. All I have to do is know how to paste this code in the correct place. Now, one thing to note, if I want to add a new row or edit a row or delete a row from within inside of my own Glide app, I don't need to use the API. Glide has built in actions for all three of those commands. So this is only if you want a third party tool to do one of these three things. All right, so to start off with, we're gonna do use the add row. So to copy this code, I can click anywhere inside of this gray box to copy. You see here it says copy to clipboard down here. And I'm gonna come back to my integer map and now I'm going to paste. I like to start from the bottom up when I'm doing with Integra Mat. I found it's most efficient. So I'm gonna come over here to body type and it's always going to be raw. So body type is always raw. Content type is always JSON. This is how Glide is passing, this value, passing the values to us. So raw and JSON. Then under the request content, here is where I will paste what I copied from Glide. I'm gonna close this window down here. So I just pasted all this code into the request content block, but all of this code doesn't belong in the request content block. The only part that belongs is the section after this data raw single quote. So from curly bracket all the way down to the last curly bracket. This is the portion that belongs inside of the request content. So what I like to do is come to the end, delete that last single quote, come back up to where it says data raw, and from the single quote to the beginning, I'm gonna cut, because we're gonna paste this someplace else later. And now that just leaves us the single quote to single quote. Um, we'll come back to these column values in a minute. All right, going back to the top. Now it's asking for a URL. So the URL is also found in what we cut. So if I paste what's left here, we see there's a URL at the top, and that's gonna be the URL that we leverage here inside the URL feature. So I'm gonna delete everything from the single quote to the beginning. Um, one thing to know here is the part that I'm deleting here, which says post, that's going to be the method that we add down below here. It's always going to be post. So, um, but I'm going to delete the single quote to the beginning, just leaving us this HTTPS API, glideapp.io, API function, mutate tables. This is always going to be the same URL, no matter which app you're working in, which table you're working in, and what action you're looking to do within Glide. It's always the same URL. All right, so from this single quote to the end, I'm going to cut, leaving us just the URL. Method, as we saw before, is a post, because we're putting something somewhere, we're posting something somewhere. And then lastly is just this headers. We don't need this query string as part of this action. So for the headers, we're gonna do a final paste. And you see there are two headers here. Now this first header where it says content type application JSON, that we can get rid of because we're defining that here under content type application JSON, right? It matches. So we can actually delete everything of that first header. This second header where it says authorization bearer, this is what we're gonna keep. We don't need this data raw tag because again, we're defining that underneath the body type. So you see this body type raw. So we can trash this last row here too. Now for the header, we don't need to say the word header because we're adding a header. So all we need is the name of the header. And in this case, it's authorization. So all we have to do is keep the word authorization in the name. And then the value is gonna be this bearer ID. You see here, I've hidden my bearer ID in this video because the bearer ID is like keys to the castle. You don't want to expose or share your bearer ID because then any application can talk to any of your applications because it's user specific. Um, so we definitely wanna keep that a secret. So, but what I'm gonna do is copy this bearer um, ID here and then paste it in the value section and then delete everything else. Okay, so this is what it should look like. You have your URL, method post, this one header, authorization, bearer, then your bearer ID, body type raw, content type JSON, and then under the request content, you have curly bracket to curly bracket. And then the last step here is just to modify what column values you want, right? So I don't want the words email, name, date, and type I don't want those words getting sent to my Glide app. I want the actual data coming in from my Calendly. So I have to replace these with the Calendly tags from the get event or watch events. Luckily, I already know what these are because I've been doing this for a while. So email is going to be email, name is name, date will be the start time, type is gonna be my uh, event name, 
details are the answers to my questions. Status will be the status of the event, and my event ID is my event tag. All right, I'll hit OK, save. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my integer mat, activate it immediately, and we should see that whenever I create a brand new Calendly event now, it's going to watch the event, grab the information, and make that request back to Glide and create a new row for me because I selected the add row API usage here. All right, so let's try this out. I'm going to go to Calendly. I'm going to create a new event here. Let's do 850. I'll just pop in some information and schedule. All right, if you see that it's going to follow this path, boom, boom, and it's going to hit our Glide app in seconds. And let's make sure the data looks correct. So we have email, name, date, type, details, active, and event ID. Perfect. This is great. So um, this is an easy way using just three steps in our IntegraMat to add new rows from any other source back to our Glide app. Now, it gets a little trickier if you want to use the other two commands. So if I go to my bookings and show API usage, you see we can also modify these rows or delete the rows. And both of these require that you know what the row ID is as part of the integration. Now, there are two ways to make that happen. Either one, you have to physically take this row ID and place it somewhere, which is not very efficient because we're trying to automate everything. Okay. Or we can leverage our integration to store that row ID for later retrieval. So what's nice about this HTTP make a request is that not only will it add a row to my Glide app, but it will also return the row ID that was created. So all I have to do is store that row ID so I can retrieve it later. Integramat makes that really easy. They actually have a module here called Data Store where I can store my data. <laughs> so I'm going to click on Data Store here, and I'm going to add or replace a record. I'm going to just connect that to the end of my HTTP. Again, you don't need to do this if the only thing you're looking to do is add rows, but if you want to edit or delete rows, um, you'll need to use some sort of Data Store here. So here is where I would add a new Data Store. I've already created one, so I'll just select it. I've named it Row IDs. And here it's looking for a key and a value. So the value I defined when I created it was row ID. Uh, the key here is going to be a unique ID that comes from whatever your trigger is. So in this case, my trigger is watching events. So my key will be an event. And so I have an event tag here. But you're looking for some sort of like task ID or calendar ID or mail ID or event ID. So here's my event ID. And the record that I want to write is the row ID that got returned. Now, you see here in my HTTP request, I actually can see that there's a row ID here. See? But that row ID is formatted in JSON. I don't want this whole string here. I only need this H9B4 blah, 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 this row ID here. So it's not just this data. I can't just pop that data in. I actually have to manipulate it first. So we're going to come back to our data store in just a second. What we're going to do is in between our make a request and our data store, we need to parse that JSON. Again, I don't need to code anything. All I have to do is know how to copy and paste. So I'm going to select the JSON module, and we're going to parse JSON, put that in the middle. And here it's looking for a data structure and where the JSON string is. So the JSON string we know is this data. But what's the data structure, right? So we can actually have Integramat determine that. I'm going to select Add, name my data structure. I can call this like row IDs coming from Glide or something. And then I can generate the structure. And for generation, it's looking for some sort of sample data. So the sample data that we have here is found within this HTTP request. If I were to click on this little one over here, um, if you don't see this one, you're going to have to run your module once, go back into the history, and then you'll see the one there for successful, um, successful requests. So I'm going to select this one, and you see the row ID is down here in this data section. So I can come over here and just copy, and then paste. So I'm going to add, call it something, generator, and paste. If you don't want to go through all that and you want to pause the video now and just 
copy this format, that works too. So all you need to do is type a square bracket, curly bracket, double quote, the word row ID, where row is lowercase and ID is capitalized, double quote, colon, and then a quote, and then another quote, and then put something inside of those two quotes. It doesn't matter what you put there, right? It could be like even a letter, just a letter A and save. And it's going to know that it's, you're finding some sort of row ID and the text is text. See that? And then uh, save this. Now, I already have one saved. I called it get row IDs from Glide. And then I'm going to hit OK. All right, so from here, if I go back to the data store, now for the row ID, I'm not going to choose this data here, but rather I'm going to choose the row ID that it found from that parse JSON module. OK. And there we go. So now it's going to watch an event, get an event, make a request. It returns the row ID, which I parse, and then store that row ID and as it matches the Calendly ID. All right, so now let's say every time I cancel a Calendly, I want my row to reflect that. So one of the values I'm returning is the status. In this case, it's active. And if I cancel something, it's going to show up is canceled, right? So I have this active or canceled status to be the which path it's going to take. So back in my integramat, we have to make some sort of decision as to where it's going to either uh, create a new request here, right? This is an, an add row versus um, modifying a row. So I need another branch or I need a fork here. So integramat has that under the flow control. We have a way to add a router. So I'm gonna unlink this get an event to the make a request and instead connect it to my router. Like that. Okay. So it's gonna get an event and then decide what it wants to do. So we only want it to create a new request or a new row in my app when the status is active. So I can add a filter on this router where the condition is that the status, I could say equal to active, but I like to do contains case insensitive, just in case there's some sort of variation of it, where status is more or less active. I hit OK, which then means I'm going to create a new HTTP request when it's something other than active, right? Now, I could create a brand new HTTP module here and set it up from scratch, just like I did this one. But what's nice is that most of the information is exactly the same. So um, all I need to do is clone this HTTP module and add it to my router down over here. And we're going to add a filter on this path to where status is uh, contains or case insensitive the word cancel. So when I cancel an event, it'll take this path. All right, so let's go ahead and modify a row now. So in my app, I'm going to show the API usage, set column, click on my HTTP request, go down to the request content, and I could just paste over all these things, but again, most of it is the same. So what I like to do is just underneath, I'm gonna paste. And you can see the only difference between this top section and the bottom section is the kind of mutation we're doing. All right, here's mutations. It's the kind of mutation. This first one was an add row to table, and the second one is a set columns in row. So I'm just going to take the set columns in row and cut it, come over here, and in this kind, paste. And the only difference in the column values is what you want to set. So if you don't want to set email, we'll just delete that altogether, right? I'm going to leave everything as is, but the thing you need to add is the row ID. So then that way it knows which row you want to edit. And you define that after that first curly bracket after the first or after that last parameter. So here it says event ID, event ID has a curly bracket, comma, and then this row ID um, values here. So if I were to copy this comma and then row ID, row ID, cut it, come over here to this first curly bracket, and paste, all I need to do is define what the row ID is. All right, so that means we need to get the row ID prior to this step. All right, so there's one last module that we need. I'm going to save this for now. I'm going to come over here. Now, the last module we need is to get the row ID. 
we can um, use the data store module for that as well. So I'm going to select the data store. And here, instead of add or replacing a record, we need to get a record. So I'll select get a record. We can add it either here or we can add it here. Probably just add it here because we don't really need to get a record when we're going to create something. So I'll do it here. And the record we want to get okay, is from our row IDs data store that we created um, over here. And the key is going to be the event. That's the key that we defined in the data store, if you remember. Okay. And so it's going to get the record from the event that was located in this Calendly and spit back the row ID. So in our HTTP make a request under the row ID, now you see that it found the row ID from our data store. I'm going to add that in. Hit OK. All right, so let's test this out. I'm going to save this. And just so you see the path, I'm going to click on Run Once. And now it's waiting for me to do something. So in Calendly, I'm going to find that event that I just created and cancel it. And watch what happens. It follows the path, follows the path, follows the path, and boom, it makes that request. Coming back to my Glide app, we see that now my status is canceled. That's fantastic. Now, if we wanted instead to maybe delete the row rather than set the row, well, then we just use that other API call. So here, the show API usage, we'll do the delete row instead. I'm going to come back over here and modify this make a request. And just like before, I'm just going to scroll down here and paste the code underneath, and then I'll just delete it later. So I'll paste. And you see that the kind is now delete row. And it only needs the table name and the row ID. That's all it needs. So uh, what I'm going to do is copy this, this square bracket after mutations all the way to this square bracket for the mutations. So I'm just going to copy this mutations section here. Again, we don't need to code anything. We're just cutting and pasting. right? And then under this mutations, I'll replace it. All right. And then the only information we need is the row ID. So I'll delete row ID and then select the row ID from the data store like that. I almost forgot we have to delete that code underneath, right? So we'll need to make one request content. This one we don't need. So let's we'll delete all that. Hit OK. And now we should be good to go. I'm going to go ahead and save this Integromat scenario. And let's do this whole thing from scratch. So I'm going to run this once, go up to my Calendly, and create a new event. And we should see it takes the first path. and create a new row. Excellent. Next, we're going to go ahead and run it once so we can see the path. And I'm going to cancel that event that was just created. And you should see that it takes the second path. There we go. It's doing its thing, and that row should be deleted. There it goes. Now the row is gone. So yes, now you can integrate any app that exists out there in the world as long as they have an API and have it talk directly to your Glide app through Glide's API. And so the possibilities are endless and the only skill you need to know is how to copy and paste, right? Which is fantastic. So if you like this video, make sure that you like and subscribe so you don't miss any of my future content. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.